Hi, it's me, MacroSolid Robot. Today, I will discuss MacroDXF. It is a generator of DXF files from unfolding operations, like parts modeled with tools, from the Sheet Metal tab. You can generate DXF for all sheet metal parts of the active assembly, active part, or from the Bill of Materials tab for all components, or only selected ones. In SolidWorks, you can export DXF files from sheets, from the active model, using option Save As, or after starting the exports to DXF DWG option, from the context menu, of course after selecting the unfolding operation. Before generating the file, you set what apart from the external contour of the unfolded sheet, and holes, should be additionally shown in it, for example, bending lines or sketches not absorbed by operations. DXF export is always performed from the fixed face of the unfolding operation in relation to the export settings defined in system options. You can also save a 2D drawing sheet and a selected view to DXF. Preparing files for burning for a large order is a real challenge. You need to open each file, save the layout as DXF with a specific name to the location you need. To this, must be added the time necessary for the processing and verification of such files. Definitely, the automation of this task has a great potential for savings in the company, and this is where the DXF macro comes in handy. It allows you to plan the name of the generated file based on data previously downloaded from the model, such as material, sheet thickness, number of pieces, or information pressed into the file properties. You have six parts at your disposal, from which you can build a name. Between them, you can enter a separator, for example an underscore. Some machines, nesting applications can automatically extract information from the file name, from the adopted naming scheme, and use it further. If you enter the material, thickness, and number of pieces to be burnt into the DXF name, or at least the name of the folder, in which the DXF will be saved, in addition to the part file name, then you will not have to define this information inside the DXF, or you will not have to transfer it to production in another way. You can configure the file saving destination. You will save the DXF next to the part file, next to the part file, but in a separate folder, or even deeper in a subfolder. DXF can be exported in one indicated location, for example, with an active assembly from which the macro is run. The saving path can be more complicated, created on the fly, taking into account for example, a property or an order number. Thanks to the built-in functionalities, it is possible to further organize and sort DXF files into subdirectories, according to material, sheet thickness and information whether the sheet has bends, or not. In addition to the export options provided by SolidWorks itself, the macro can suppress blind holes, replace counterbore and countersink holes with normal ones, and remove external countersinks and holes, modeled with the hole wizard, thanks to which, DXF editing of non-standard sheets in external applications is shortened to the necessary minimum. Attention! The program interferes with the operations that create the model, hence all dependent files running in the background will be automatically closed, and after exporting DXF, the part model will also be closed, without saving changes. It is therefore important to run the generator on a saved and rebuilt model. You can use the DXF and DXF date columns to show you the current status of the documentation. The DXF file can be mapped, that is, you can specify what should appear on its layers, using what line and color. Set what else, should be shown apart the contours to be burned, hidden edges, bend lines, sketches not absorbed by operations, or bounding box. If the option of mapping customization is enabled, a window will appear each time before export, in which you can define layers, and appropriate mapping of elements for them. Save to a file and pin this file in system options and in the DXF macro. The DXF macro also has an unconventional generating mode. Macro opens the drawing template, places the layout view on the sheet, 
and saves the document to a DXF file according to the macro settings. If notes linked to properties are provided in the drawing template, they will be completed automatically as you drag the view onto the drawing. Other elements that would appear in the DXF file, along with the drag depend on the settings of the drawing document properties, in particular on the detailing tab. This is where you will find the special option, insert automatically on view creation. If you do not attach your template, ours will be used. Thanks for watching. Please check the next video and see you soon.